Hello my tech friends, I have a question for you. Are you like me and maybe you've been using IQ to configure your Corsair RGB devices and thought to yourself that IQ is probably the best RGB software that is out there, but I really wish that I could control other things like my addressable RGB fans that aren't Corsair, a digital RGB strip, and maybe even something like this neon strip light, which that really would be the dream, being able to control all of that through IQ. And hang on, let me just turn this off because it's probably getting a bit distracting, bear with me. I'll just, I'll just delete that. Notice that, did you? Yep, Aura, Mystic Light, RGB Fusion, Polychrome, they're all great and I actually covered which motherboard RGB is the best in a video which I put up there, there. But IQ has significantly better customization and lighting control than any of them. And the reason that they're not the go-to for RGB everything is you can only control Corsair devices. Well today, that all changes and I'm going to show you how to get any typical addressable RGB device working 100% controllable in Corsair IQ allowing you to take your RGB to the next level. So before we start, if you're not subscribed, join our TechLens community, especially if you don't want to miss more useful and unique content such as this. I literally can't find any other videos showing you how to get this set up, so I'm really excited that TechLens subscribers get to be the first to see. So make sure that you have notifications turned on for future videos and let's get into this. Before I show you how to get your addressable RGB devices working with the iQ, there is one thing that we do need to clarify. And that's what I meant by connect any typical addressable RGB device to iQ. Well, there's no other way to put this, but computer RGB is a f***ing mess. There's multiple connector types for different brands that have either tried to follow the norm or tried to implement their own standards. And this isn't even going into the notoriously buggy side of software RGB. But in terms of addressable RGB connectors, there are two common types for PC enthusiasts. There's this one, which is found on basically every motherboard that has an addressable RGB header. And it's originally based off the four pin 5050 non-addressable RGB header that you also find on motherboards. But instead of using four pins that carry the power and then the RG and B values for the the entire strip. The addressable version only needs three, which carry power, data, and also ground. This will definitely be important in a bit, but that is typical connector type number one, which I like to call the addressable or three pin 5050 connector. And you may have this on the device that you want to connect to IQ. But as for typical connector type number two, we have this guy, which is the three pin JST SM connector. And it also carries power, data, and ground. You see a trend here. You'll probably find that this connector is a bit more common than the three pin 5050 connector among addressable RGB devices and LED strips, but they often come with an adapter for your motherboard. So that's great. You have a device with one of those connectors and you have a motherboard, you're ready to plug it in and start using IQ. Well, hold on there because you still have two obstacles. You need one of these or one of these or even one of these. Basically, you will need a device that will communicate with IQ through the internal USB header that you can also plug an RGB strip into. Something like the Commander Pro or the Lighting Node Pro or even the Lighting Node Core. And I'll put a list of all the compatible devices in the description for you. But even with one of those devices, you still have one small problem, this connector. What even is this connector? One of Corsair's stupid proprietary connector uh, ones. Actually, Linus, not quite. Despite what others will tell you, Corsair didn't invent these connectors. They're called locking DuPont connectors and they've been around for way over a decade now. But I'll give Linus credit, although they're not proprietary, they are unique to Corsair in the PC RGB space, which is why you can't just plug an RGB strip into an IQ device. Until now, in comes this adapter and this guy. Oh, and this guy too ready to save the day. At first glance, they might look the same, but I promise you that they have very important differences. And we'll go into which one is for which scenario specific to your RGB and Corsair device. But I actually stumbled upon these a while back and I bought this guy after one of my many research rabbit holes, trying to find a solution to this IQ problem. And after using it, I reached out to Pirate Dog Tech who make these for you guys and had a selection sent over so that I could make this video for you. So thank you, Pirate Dog Tech. The guy who runs it is actually a really nice dude. These adapters are what you need to make this whole thing work. They will take your typical digital RGB devices and convert them into DuPont connectors, which are needed for your IQ devices. This is great. It absolutely solves our problem. And now connecting anything like this neon strip, case fans, you name it. Anything with either of the two typical connector types that we spoke about earlier. It really is as simple as using one of these adapters between your RGB components and the IQ device. It allows you to apply any effect within IQ to match your RAM, your keyboard, your mouse, and even have your connected RGB components work with Corsair Lightlink. 
Synchronizing effects with all of your Corsair devices to make for a truly unique RGB look for your computer that will take your RGB game up at least another five levels. The possibilities are endless. Well, almost. See, there's a couple nuances that you need to be aware of if you want to get this set up, and they have to do with how IQ operates. So you beat the system, you stuck it to the man, you bought one of these adapters and you hacked your RGB into IQ. You're a champion. But now your RGB device is in IQ land and it sees your non-Corsair RGB components as, well, just another Corsair RGB device which means that you have to configure it as one. This comes with a couple limitations, and I'll go through them with you now before showing you which adapter you need for which situation. After you plug in your addressable device, we will use this very cheap addressable strip and the Lighting Node Pro. You can go into IQ and tell it that we have one RGB strip connected. Well, that doesn't look quite right. See, IQ is treating this strip as a Corsair RGB strip, which evidently have 10 LEDs, and my strip has 24. It's not too much of an issue as we can tell IQ that there's more strips connected. Perfect, but that does mean that we have a hard limit on how many LEDs we can configure as connected strips in IQ, which turns out to be 60. I'm sure this won't be an issue for too many people, but it is something that you do need to know as my neon RGB strip doesn't display the last section of LEDs. But there's actually a workaround for that, although it too comes with limitations. Corsair fans have more than 10 LEDs, so why don't we just set it up as a collection of those? And that's a great idea that will work, but Corsair fans have LED arrangements that aren't one continuous line of LEDs starting at number one. That means that something like this rainbow effect won't look too much different in all honesty, but a light link effect like visor will display out of order. Which don't get me wrong, it produces a cool effect, not the right effect, but cool either way. But bear in mind that this limitation only applies if you're looking for that kind of highly sequential effect and you're setting up your RGB device as a collection of fans, or you have a lighting node core as the IQ device, as that has to be fans. So if you're able to, I just recommend to set everything up as RGB strips to avoid any issues like that. But you know me, I like to be thorough with you guys, as much info as I can. So now you know the IQ side of it and how to get your device set up with the lighting you want, let's talk about what adapter you need to make that happen and what you might need to be aware of. Well, you know whether you need the 3-pin 50-50 header or the 3-pin JST-SM connector, based on what you're trying to get hooked up with IQ. But what about the other side, the DuPont connector, that plugs into the IQ device? Well, these come in two variants, a 3-pin and a 4-pin. The short version of the story is that you need the 3-pin for connecting your device to a Commander Pro or a Lighting Node Pro, and the 4-pin will be used for connecting to an RGB fan hub or a lighting node core. Honestly, the 3-pin variant really doesn't need much explanation. But the 4-pin adapters for the RGB fan hubs and lighting node cores, which are found in Corsair cases and packs of fans, they have another nuance that I do need to explain to you. You see that fourth cable? That's for data return. Unlike the Commander Pro and the Lighting Node Pro, these devices take the LED data and send it through all of the outputs in order. That in order part is the most important part of that sentence, and I'll show you why. If I set up two HD120 fans, for example, what it's doing is sending the RGB values I just set down the first output and up the data wire. So fan number one then takes its set of values and then passes the rest of the values back down the fourth wire. Back to the Lighting Node Core, and onto channel two. You may be asking yourself, why is this important? What is it with this four pin adapter? Well, your device, the one that you want to try and plug into IQ, doesn't have that fourth cable needed to return the signal after it's used the LED it needs, which means that the four pin adapters need to do a little trickery. They not only need to send the RGB signal to the non-Corsair device that you're plugging in, but they also need to immediately return that signal that's being sent to the next channel, as your device won't return it. This means that the next channel will behave exactly the same as the channel that you connected the non-Corsair device into. Fortunately, there is a nice and easy way that you can get around this, and that's by placing the device after the Corsair ones on the Node Core or RGB Fan Hub. That will have you guys covered. Personally, I am really happy with this. It has to be the best RGB solution out there. The devices you want, controlled by arguably the best RGB software there is. And I'm probably going to be upgrading quite a few things to this. Maybe my desk behind my monitor. Possibilities, almost endless. So make sure you check out the links in the video description for all of the adapters and the devices that you need. I also managed to hook you guys up with a limited time discount below to help you out. And what I'll do is I'll link Pirate Dog Tech's full store as well. They have adapters and other cool stuff that would definitely get your creativity flowing. And send them a message if you need something custom. They're happy to help. But if you enjoyed this video, why not get subscribed? Join our TechLens community and make sure that you don't miss more videos like this. 
The next video will actually be Budget versus Beast episode two. Episode one was awesome, and thank you guys for the positivity on that one. But otherwise, drop a like if this was useful, leave a comment with questions, love, and support, and I'll see you guys in the next one.